Hi there, I hope you are doing well and welcome to a new video. This is Vivi Cameron and today I'm going to be making these super cute gift card holders or money envelopes. They are pretty sturdy and solid and of course you can use them as a packaging solution for anything else. The first thing I need to say is that you don't need dies to do this. However, I use the Spellbinders small die of the month and also the large die of the month to decorate this project. To create this project, I use 240 grams cardstock and for the handles, I like to use Tonic Studios Classic Card or Embossed Cardstock. I'm going to be listing those cardstocks in the video description. Okay, to keep it simple, I'm going to be using this cardstock for everything today. So I'm going to use just one A4 sheet of cardstock and I'm going to trim this at five inches across the longer side of the sheet. And from this piece here, I'm going to trim the handles at three quarters of an inch. So I need two of them and I got a piece of cardstock left that I'm going to trim at five inches and this is about two inches wide and this is the piece that I'm going to use to create the holder inside the paper purse. So these are the pieces I just trimmed and I'm going to use the larger piece, this one here, and I'm going to trim this at nine inches. And with these two pieces here, I'm going to create the body or the main piece for the bag. I'm going to use this die here from the Spellbinders large die of the month designed to create a mini slim lime envelope but I'm going to use it to die cut this piece here that is going to be the front flap of the bag. Now I'm going to die cut the decorative pieces for the bag and I'm using here dies from the small die of the month by Spellbinders these are also designed to create decorative pieces for mini slim line cards but I wanted to show you something completely different with the dies. To get rid of the tiny mini die cuts I simply shake the die against the mat and you will see all those little pieces popping off the die and also the die cut. I know this looks a little bit messy but this is what I do to get this done quickly. The small die this month by Spellbinders includes three dies that will cut these three different panels. There is also another two dies that I'm going to use to create a little tag for the pores and you will see it later on. So with these solid pieces here, I'm just creating a solid background for these other pieces with the intricate detail and I'm going to glue these just like that. And when I have die cuts like this, I only add glue at the edges of the piece and in the center and then using a little piece of paper, I just glue these pieces like so. And this is to avoid having glue all over the place and to have a better looking piece. So once I have done this, I'm going to work in this piece here that measures five inches by nine and I'm going to score a half inch at four at five in an eight and a half inches. Then I'm going to fold the paper. I know it's hard to see the scoring lines there, but I'm going to fold over those scoring lines. And as simple as that, we create this piece that is very flimsy at the moment. But when we start adding die cuts over this, this is going to be sturdy and very solid. Now I'm going to grab this piece here. I'm going to score at half inch and I'm going to fold over the scoring line and using glue, I'm going to adhere this piece over the other piece I just scored. We need to make sure that this is perfectly adhered. And now I'm going to create a little holder for the gift card or money. And I'm going to use the piece that measures five inches by two inches and I'm going to fold it in half. You can score the paper if you want to. Now I'm going to score this piece at half inch from both ends, just like that. 
and then I'm going to fold over the scoring lines like so and this creates this piece that is going to hold the money or the gift card. I'm going to create a slit using a craft knife to be able to insert the gift card or the money and to glue this I'm going to use liquid glue and I'm going to make sure that I'm not gluing this over the scoring line but maybe a quarter of an inch away from that scoring line. Then all I have to do is to add glue in this piece here and shape this as a triangle and glue it in place. And I'm going to ask you to adhere this piece at the very end after adhering the decorative pieces. That will make it easier to handle and to adhere the pieces. So the next thing I'm going to do is to adhere the decorative pieces and I'm going to align the bottom of this piece with the scoring line. So this is not going over the scoring line, just align it with it. Now for easy folding, we are going to need the scoring tool and we are going to score over the scoring lines or the foldings that were already there. And now I'm going to score the other line. It's important to apply good pressure to make sure that we achieve a nice increased folding. You can score the decorative piece before adding it to the back, but I prefer to do it this way to avoid having to measure everything or to make mistakes. So the next thing I'm going to do is to adhere this piece here, and I'm just going to align this with the other piece and I'm going to glue this like so. There is an excess of paper that I need to cut. I'm going to use the scissors here to do that. And then I keep pressing down this piece until the glue is dry. Then using the guillotine, I can trim that edge perfectly. And then I'm going to score and fold the paper as I did before with the other part. And if there is anything that is not properly glued, you can just easily fix that with a little bit of glue. So this is a process of building something. It doesn't have to be done perfectly from the very beginning. Remember the paper has memory and you need to manipulate it and shape it as you want to. It was flat, now it's something different. So the next thing I'm going to do is the back handles. This piece is too long. So I'm just going to adjust the size or the length of the handles for my project. I'm eyeballing this. I will say that this is about nine inches long, but you can make this in different lengths. Now I'm going to use a corner punch to round the edges of this piece here, just like that. You can use scissors if you don't have a corner punch to do this, but I just think that this is a nice finishing touch. To shape the handles, I'm going to start folding the paper from the center of this piece towards the ends and I'm going to stop about one inch from each end so that I don't touch at all those ends and I'm going to use a bond folder to burnish that folding line. So the handles are going to look very flimsy and very crooked at this stage and I'm going to use double-sided tape or glue to adhere the area that is folded, just like that. In this case, because I'm using very thin cardstock, I prefer double-sided tape, and that helped me to give a stability and also shape to this handle. So using the bone folder also is key to complete a shape in the handle. And with my fingertips, I'm just shaping the ends of the handles. So that's very easy. And to decorate the handles, the sky is the limit. I'm going to use a little piece of cardstock to create a little band that is going to go around this area here, just like that. Then I glue the ends of that piece. And as you can see there, this can be removed from the handle, but I want to glue it in place like so. I do the same for all the handle ends and I like to add a decorative element. So I'm going to use here gold fashion embellishments by Spellbinders. 
and that's it those are the handles they are super cute and you can use them for different gift bags baskets paper suitcases or boxes so now i'm going to adhere this and i use liquid glue and i just hold down this until the glue dries this glue is going to give me permanent bond and these kind of handles add a completely different look and feel to any project i think they are super cute to decorate this project i'm going to use these floral dies included in the lash die of the month and this little piece here with the sentiment was made using dies from the small die of the month and i'm just going to layer these flowers these are very easy to put together you can layer them in different ways or use different pieces to create different flower designs there is no a right way to do this and i'm just gluing these little flowers in the corner or the top corner of the back and i'm also using leaves that i die cut out of gold mirror castor all the supplies i'm using in this video are listed in the video description and there is also a link to my blog post now i'm going to use wire and crimp beads that i use to make jewelry i don't know how to say that correctly in english but these are little parts that i use to make jewelry and this is the bag as you can see there it opens like this you can place there your gift card or money you can use a glue dot to keep this closet if you want to but it's not necessary you can make this in different colors for different occasions and in different sizes this here measures five inches by three inches and a half you can alter the design to have a larger flap if you want to the flap in this bag is slightly larger than in the other one and there are very little differences between one and the other one but to be honest we don't have any big difference here the difference will be the kind of decorative elements or die cuts that you use to make these projects last but not least let me show you more ideas using spell binders kits of this month let's start with the large die of the month designed to create mini slim lime envelopes and mini slim lime decorative panels for your cards. It also includes that happy birthday sentiment, florals and lips that I also use for the project in this video. The Spellbinders Hot Foil Kit of the Month includes glimmer plate that coordinates with the dies in the large die of the month and it will create that beautiful hot foiled dotty pattern around the edges of those panels i'm also loving the stamp of the month it will allow you to create the most beautiful tone on tone stamping or you can also enjoy doing some coloring as well i think you are going to love the amazing paper grace die of the month is going to allow you to create a three-dimensional card that fits in an envelope it's not that bulky and look at this gorgeousness on july 15 i'm going to share ideas and inspiration using this die set and also a tutorial so stay tuned it is so adorable and is also listed in the video description the spell binders card kit of the month will allow you to create several different projects with different elements such as die cuts and also stickers die cut frames and also includes 10 envelopes and card blanks to create many different projects so i invite you to visit my blog today i have 10 different projects using different kits offered by spellbinders and that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this video do not forget to subscribe to my channel or to visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye!